This is 47. paintball tips. I might change that final number in editing though. Don't cheat. Paintball literally might be the easiest sport in the world to cheat at, really. You think about it, you just shoot someone and it's really easy to just wipe off hits. Don't do it. I mean, you're really just ruining it for yourself. You're ruining it for everyone out there. I mean, we're just trying to go out there and have fun. And when you wipe hits, it just kind of ruins it for everyone. Always face the correct way downfield. I mean, standing with your back to the bunker like this is just ridiculous. Too many new players are doing it and it really isn't advantageous at all. Just face the correct way. It's gonna be a lot easier to shoot back, see stuff, and just play paintball in general. And don't blind fire. Blind firing is when you just kind of blindly fire over the top of bunkers. It can be kind of dangerous just because you don't know what's over there. You're shooting your own teammates in the butt. You could be shooting a ref in the face. You don't know what's going on. Don't blind fire. This is like the worst case scenario, right? You drop your tank, bam, right on the regulator. And then you can get all bent up and mangled. But if you have that thread saver on there, you know, it's going to save those threads. Wear the correct footwear when you go play paintball, you know? I, you know, I wear sandals sometimes when I go play paintball. It's just cooler and they're more comfortable. Whatever. Sometimes though, I do wear cleats. I wear these soccer cleats. They're super flimsy, but they're closed toed. At least wear closed toed shoes. I probably wouldn't recommend sandals. Wear closed toed shoes playing paintball. Don't take your mask off, guys. Too many people are just taking their masks off for weird reasons. We see pro players doing it sometimes. We see people who played paintball one time. What? Eyes are important. Just leave your mask on. And then be aggressive. When you're out there playing, you're sitting back. It's just not as fun. Get up there and run around. I mean, you don't have to be crazy, overly aggressive. Just move around. Don't stay in one spot. It's just not as fun. And yeah, be aggressive when you play, but you don't have to be overly aggressive. There's no reason to overshoot people like this. I mean, we're playing wreck, so, you know, maybe shoot me in the back one time, you know, oh, maybe two times. Hurt. But there's no reason to just destroy someone like this and shoot them six or seven times. Good job. And when someone's walking off the field, you don't have to shoot them in the back more. I know sometimes people just stand up out of the bunker and you're shooting and you hit them on accident, but don't do it on purpose, you know. It's not really that it hurts. It's just disrespectful to shoot people a bunch. <laughs> Good job. And you really do have to be able to shoot with both hands. Most people are dominant with their right hand, so shooting right hand is easy, but focus a little bit more maybe on that left hand. You can get a smaller profile, and just aiming is easier when you can get a good grip, a normal style grip with your left hand. And don't shoot paintballs off the ground. Paint's been sitting there. It's going to be sitting in the sun. It's getting moisture all over it, so it could shrink and it could expand. It's going to get really brittle. Put it inside the gun's just going to mess stuff up. So just leave the paint there. Don't shoot it off the ground. Just bring more paintballs or don't shoot as much. One issue with airball bunkers is when they blow up really big, they can get kind of inflated on the sides. A little trick you can do is kind of pop a pod in there and kind of fill that gap up. So if people are trying to shoot your foot through that gap, you can just shove a pod in there to take that impact rather than that ball sneaking through there and getting you on the foot. Just like all sports, if you want to get better at paintball, you're going to have to do drills. So I think maybe focusing on the fundamentals, say like snap shooting and then running and shooting, and then knowing you have to do those kind of slower if you're doing practice right, make sure you hit the targets and then maybe you can speed it up a little bit, but do drills if you want to get better. If you're big and got long arms like me, get yourself a tank extender. It, to make the gun about an inch and a half longer from your you know, current tank setup, they're only like 20 bucks. Try it out, long guns feel cool, tank extender. Fixing a macro line. So a macro line is something that we're seeing on older paintball guns. It's that hard plastic hose that slides into that fitting. Inside that fitting, there's an O-ring that the hose kind of sits against to cause that seal. There's two ways you can fix that. You can remove this collar and just replace that O-ring. When you put that collar in though, make sure you bend those little tabs out just a little bit, then push it back in. And you also want to make sure that macro line is cut straight. You don't want any crazy angles. You want to make sure that that straight cut can fit flush on that O-ring inside that fitting. Fixing a macro line. 
And communication is key in paintball, and it's one of the things that the best players are doing. They're talking clearly to their teammates, yeah, so that they kind of know what's though. happening, they can help each other out. They're not just wildly yelling out bunker names. They're kind of talking or having a hey, conversation with their teammates side. to figure out the best game plan. So talk clearly hey, and don't just move. freak out. Use a ball hauler or a paint caddy. I mean, we're filling pods constantly playing paintball. So having this ball hauler just makes it a little bit easier to fill pods. And then you have a little place to store extra paintballs when you've got some stuff left over at the end of the day. Paintball guns break, tanks go bad, things happen. So have yourself a spares kit. This is just a little teeny one that I've built for myself. Has a few O-rings in there. There's some oil. I have some burst disc. Put yourself one together. It could be useful. And when you get shot in the lens, don't dunk it underwater. Too many people are just putting the whole entire mask or a whole entire lens in water. With these thermal lenses, that dual pane lens, you can get water in there. It can break apart the glue. The thermal doesn't work anymore. And yeah, you get like a fish tank effect. Don't just wipe it down. And fixing those leaks can be kind of hard to find sometimes. So I find that using Windex or like window cleaner works really well. It's kind of soapy and then it's also got a lot of ammonia in there, I think. So it evaporates really quickly. So you can find those leaks because it's soapy and then it just evaporates really easy. So I love that. Spray a little bit of window cleaner on a leak and it's easier to find. Put some tape on your pods. You know, we got a lot of these things. They go missing. They're hard to find sometimes. So putting some tape on there makes them a little bit easier to identify in a bush. Maybe Greg's stealing pods again so you can go track Greg down because he stole your goddamn pod again. Now I play paintball in the desert, so it's very important that I stay hydrated and bring snacks when I'm playing paintball. So it's got to be a tip. Make sure you're hydrated. Too many of us go out there and have fun and like forget that you got to drink water and eat sometimes. So at least bring a bunch of water. You don't have to eat. Just bring a lot of water. If paintball sit around for too long, sometimes you can get oil all over the ball. Or if you get a bad box for some reason, you can have oil in there. That oil will make them shoot all over the place. So you can clean it off. The best way I like to do it is kind of just lay them down. Use microfiber maybe to lay it at the base and then a microfiber on top. And then just kind of move those paintballs around. That can help clean out broken paint or that oil. Those dimples on there though, you can't clean those off with a microfiber. Those are, those are permanent. This is just really, really old paint. But you can clean off the oil really easy. Like I said before, I pretty much play paintball in a desert. And when our paintballs get hot, they can get all squishy and weird. So we want to keep them a little bit better temperature controlled. So even putting them in an ice chest like this in the morning can keep them quite a bit cooler and then it works better throughout the day. If you want to get them really cool, you can put some ice in there, put a towel on top. They get really cool in there, make that paint really fragile. And the same thing goes for storing the paint when you're done with it. Don't leave it in your car, take it out of your car, put it inside. It's going to just last way longer. Another tip, flip it over and it'll last even longer so the paint won't settle and get all weird. The best tip has to be buying a Paintball Room My Life headband. They're there right now, 30 bucks. It supports this channel and I, you know, make videos. So sometimes people can get a little too excited. So if you shoot someone, you know, call them out. You can yell at them once. <sighs> Don't be this guy. Get out on your foot! Get out, get out, get out! Get out on your foot! I mean, no one likes that person. You just look like an asshole. No one likes you. People are on the sidelines like, look at this goddamn idiot. So calm down. And if you're gonna wear a head wrap or a sandana, make sure the thing's tight. Don't, like, it's all poofy like this. You look like an idiot. Like, what are you doing here? Why do you, it looks like you have like a diaper on your head. Make the thing tight. If you don't want to look crazy, wear your knee pads on the inside of your pants, not the outside. They just work better. It looks better. Everything's better about it. Knee pads are designed to go under pants. Not your, not in your under, you know what I'm saying. Common problem with tanks is the pins will start to leak. That pin will either dry out or sometimes debris will get in there. You can kind of loosen that up by just tapping on the top of that pin, or sometimes you can just push on the side, move that pin around a little bit, and a lot of times that'll get that leak to go away. And play all types of paintball. I think too many of us like, you know, get stuck on one style. You know, you're a pump player, so you're just gonna play pump. Maybe you just play mag fed, but give all of the types a shot. Go play woods ball. Maybe go play air ball, get a pump gun, go play mag fed. Because I think that's what's kind of cool about paintball is we have so many ways to play it. So play all the ways. 
and paintballs can come in a variety of sizes due to weather and just manufacturing. So getting one of these bore sizers can help you identify maybe which barrel you should use or at least what size paintballs you're using. And then getting a barrel kit will allow you to match your barrel to which paintballs you're using. Getting that good barrel match helps with accuracy. You'll get a little better air efficiency as well. One thing to not do though, is don't probably think too much about that barrel kit. My take on that is they've always been just tubes of aluminum. There's no crazy technology from one kit to another. So just get a barrel kit that's well made. And if you had a big head, maybe a really loose mask, you can double strap it. On this Empire E-Flex, I'm just able to shove the straps through and kind of double strap that thing. You can separate those straps and make it really, really secure feeling. Get a mask case to make sure that lens and that $200 paintball mask lasts longer as well. There's a lot of them out there now. HK Army make one. This is the Exalt one right here. They all kind of do the same thing. It's going to help your mask last much longer though. Get a mask case. One of the better parts about the new high-end paintball masks is all the variety of lenses we have. So use the correct lens for the condition you're playing in. If it's really bright, you're probably going to want a smoke lens. If you're playing in that woods condition, you can get like say an HDR lens that help with the contrasts and help things pop a little bit more. Use the correct lens. And buy a good mask. I mean, we're playing paintball. You got to have this thing on all day, right? So you want to make sure it's comfortable. You want to make sure it breathes well. It fits your head. And if you can, try it on, right? This is Sac Paintball in Sacramento. They have lots of mask options. So buy a high-end mask. It's definitely worth it. Do not over-grease your paintball gun. You want to make sure you're using the correct amount of grease. Just a little light coat. You don't have to put the whole tube on. Just a little teeny light coat is the correct amount of grease on nearly every single paintball gun ever made. And get yourself a fill nipple cover. That nipple cover will just help reduce the likelihood of dirt or debris getting in that regulator, causing leaks and all kinds of problems. One of the things I always forget to do when I leave the field is fill my tank. So fill your tank before you leave the field so you have air when you go home. So if you're gonna fix something, maybe test your gun before you leave, just fill your tank before you leave, you know, just in case. My compressed air tank can be kind of slippery on the back. So I like to add a little bit of athletic tape around the back, just to add a little bit more grip. They also make those rubber tank grips or tank butts. You could use those too. I like this more streamlined athletic tape style though. And if you're having trouble getting a part, a two piece of barrel, give it a whack on something. A lot of the times just that whack and jarring it a little bit can help vibrate those threads loose. And you can find that it just pops open or pops loose. Knowing the pressures of your gun can be key. So make yourself a pressure tester kit. You can see this one I've done here. I'm using a CP on off. I also using these quick disconnects with various different O-rings that allows me to check the pressures of tanks and different regulators. I'll put some links in the description to buy parts to build yourself a tester. Buying batteries can be annoying and a lot of paintball guns and hoppers are using rechargeable batteries nowadays. So get yourself some rechargeable batteries. It's really easy. You just recharge them and you know, you don't got to buy them over and over and over. Another cool battery is the Virtue N-Charge battery. You can get this cool battery for all the Virtue hoppers, or you can even put it in the die rotors. It makes it really easy to charge. You get thousands and thousands of shots off a of battery. Simple, clean, no more replacing batteries. Put some tape on the feed tube of your hopper. So most of these manufacturers are making stuff pretty good, right? And most things just fit well together. But every once in a while, you get something old that's just not working right. So say you have a gun that the feed neck's just too large. Adding a little bit of this electrical tape around the feed tube on the hopper can just make it, you know, hold in place better. <laughs>